Hello and welcome to this first video of the lesson, Customer Service. Here we will learn about the importance of customer service, the role of agents in providing service to customers, different grievances redressal mechanisms available for insurance policyholders, and how to communicate and relate with customers. So let us begin by understanding the general concepts of customer service. The role of customer service and relationships is far more critical in the case of insurance than in other products. This is because insurance is a service which is very different from real goods. Let us understand this by comparing a car with an insurance contract. A car is a tangible good which can be experienced whereas insurance contract is a contract to compensate against loss. The buyer of the car can expect immediate pleasure, whereas in the case of insurance, buyer cannot expect immediate pleasure. Making, selling and using of a car takes place at different times and places, whereas production and consumption of an insurance contract may happen simultaneously. Now let us study the serve qual model which is a well-known model for service quality. According to this model, there are five major indicators of service quality. First, reliability, which is the ability to perform the promised service dependably and accurately. Second, responsiveness, which refers to the willingness and the ability of service personnel to help customers and provide prompt response to the customer's needs. Third, assurance, which refers to the knowledge, competence and courtesy of service providers and their ability to convey trust and confidence. Fourth, empathy, which is described as the human touch. It is reflected in the caring attitude and individualized attention provided to customers. And lastly, tangibles, which represents the physical environmental factors that the customer can see, hear, and touch. For example, the location, the layout, cleanliness, or professionalism that one gets when visiting an insurance company's office. So what is the secret of success behind leading sales producer of an insurance company? It is the commitment to serve their customers. A good quality service ensures customer renewals and referrals to the agents. Let us now learn about the customer lifetime value to better understand how happy customers benefit the agent and the company. Customer lifetime value may be defined as the sum of economic benefits that can be derived from building a sound relationship with a customer over a long period of time. It consists of three parts, the historical value, the present value and the potential value. Thank you. In this next video of the lesson, Customer Service, we will see how an agent can render great service to the customers. Here we will see how the role of an agent begins at the stage of sale and continues through the duration of the contract. There are four main stages in the customer life cycle and the agent has a critical role in each of these stages. These are point of sale, proposal stage, acceptance stage and the claim stage. We will now learn about each one of them in detail. First is the point of sale. Agent is the first point of service as well as a point of sale. However, the role of an insurance agent is much more than being a salesperson. He also needs to be a risk assessor, underwriter, risk manager, counselor, designer of customized solutions and a relationship builder who thrives on building trust and long-term relationships. The second stage where the agent has an important role to play is the proposal stage. The agent has to support the customer in filling out the proposal for insurance. He should ensure that the insured takes the responsibility for the statements made therein. Explain and clarify details to proposer, as in an event of a claim, a failure to give proper and complete information can jeopardize the customer's claim. So, it is the responsibility of an agent to assist the customer in completing all the required formalities 
and explain why they are necessary. The third stage where agent has an important role to play is the acceptance stage. This stage itself is divided into three parts. The first part is the cover note. Here the agent is responsible for ensuring that the cover note is issued by the company wherever applicable to the insured. The second part is the delivery of the policy document, which is another major opportunity that an agent gets to make contact with the customer. The agent should visit the customer and explain the policy, provisions of the document and anything that is unclear to the customers. The third and last part is the policy renewal. Non-life insurance policies have to be renewed each year and the customer has a choice at the time of each renewal to continue insuring with the same company or switch to another company. The agent must maintain goodwill with the customer and inform him about the upcoming renewal date to maximize the possibility of the customer renewing the policy. The last stage is the claim stage where the agent has a crucial role to play at the time of claim settlement. It is his task to ensure that the incident giving rise to the claim is immediately informed to the insurer and that the customer carefully follows all the formalities and assists in all the investigations that may need to be done to assess the loss. Thank you. In this next video of the lesson, Customer Service, we will understand how the complaints or grievances provide an opportunity to an agent or the company to demonstrate how much they care about the customer's interests. Here we will be covering the fundamentals of grievance redressal. A complaint is a crucial moment of truth in the customer relationship. Complaints provide us the opportunity to demonstrate how much we care for the customer's interests. If the company gives a prompt response to the complaints, there is potential to actually improve customer loyalty. The human touch is very critical in this, as the customers want to feel valued. If they do not provide the service as per customer expectations, the customers may feel cheated and it also hurts their ego. IRDA has launched an integrated grievance management system, IGMS, which acts as a central repository of insurance grievance data and a tool for monitoring grievance redress in the industry. Policyholders can register on the system with their policy details and lodge their complaints. Complaints are then forwarded to respective insurance company. IGMS tracks complaints and the time taken for redressal. The complaints can be registered at the link given on the screen. The Consumer Protection Act was passed to provide better protection to the consumer's interest and to establish consumer councils and other authorities for the settlement of consumers' disputes. It is important to understand the definitions provided in the Act. They are service, which means service of any description which is available to potential users and includes the provision of facilities. Consumer, which means any person who buys any goods or avails any services for a consideration. Defect, which means any fault or imperfection in the quality, nature and manner of performance which is required to be maintained under law. Complaint, which means any allegation in writing made by a complainant on unfair trade practices, defects in goods and services, etc. And consumer disputes, which means a dispute where the respondent denies and disputes the allegations contained in the complaint. Consumer disputes redressal agencies are established in each district, state and at national level. District Forum has the jurisdiction to entertain complaints where value of the goods or services and the compensation claimed is up to Rs 20 lakhs. State Commission is a redressal authority which has original, appellate and supervisory jurisdiction. It entertains appeals from the District Forum. It entertains disputes where goods or services and the compensation claimed exceeds Rs 20 lakhs but does not exceed Rs 100 lakhs. And National Commission, which is the final authority and has original, appellate as well as supervisory jurisdiction. 
it can hear the appeals from the order passed by the State Commission. It entertains disputes where goods or services and the compensation claimed exceeds rupees 100 lakhs. All the three agencies have powers of a civil court. The procedure for filing a complaint for the three redressal agencies is very simple. There is no fee for filing a complaint or filing an appeal before any commission. The complaint can be filed by the complainant and no advocate is necessary for this purpose. If the forum is satisfied that the goods complained against suffer from any of the defects specified in the complaint or that any of the allegations contained in the complaint about the services are proved, the forum can issue an order directing the opposite party to do one or more of the following. First, return the charges paid by the complainant. Second, to award such amount as compensation to the consumers for any loss or injury suffered by the consumer due to negligence of the opposite party. Third, remove the defects or deficiencies in the services in question. Fourth, discontinue the unfair trade practice. And fifth, provide adequate costs to parties. The majority of consumer disputes with the three forums fall in the following main categories. First, delay in the settlement of claims. Second, non-settlement of claims. Third, repudiation of claims. Fourth, quantum of loss. And fifth, policy terms, conditions, etc. The central government, under the powers of Insurance Act, made redressal of public grievances rules to resolve all complaints related to settlement of claim on the part of the insurance companies in a cost-effective, efficient and impartial manner. The Ombudsman, by mutual agreement of the insured and the insurer, can act as a mediator and counsellor within the terms of reference. The decision of the Ombudsman whether to accept or reject the complaint is final. Complaints can be made to the Ombudsman if the complainant had made a previous written representation to the insurance company and the insurance company had rejected the complaint. The complainant had not received any reply within one month after receipt of the complaint by the insurer and the complainant is not satisfied with the reply given by the insurer. Secondly, the complaint is made within one year from the date of rejection by the insurance company and the complaint is not pending in any court or consumer forum or an arbitration. There are certain duties or protocols that the ombudsman is expected to follow. They are as follows. Recommendations should be made within one month of the receipt of such complaint. The copies should be sent to both the complainant and the insurance company. Recommendations have to be accepted in writing by the complainant within 15 days of receipt. A copy of acceptance letter by the insured should be sent to the insurer and his written confirmation sought within 15 days of his receiving such acceptance letter. It is important to note that if the dispute is not settled by intermediation, the ombudsman will pass a ward to the insured which he thinks is fair. The awards by ombudsman are governed by the following rules. First, the award should not be more than Rs 20 lakhs. Second, the award should be made within a period of three months from the date of receipt. Third, the insurer shall comply with the award and send a written intimation to the ombudsman within 15 days. And fourth, if the insured does not intimate in writing the acceptance of such award, the insurer may not implement the award. Thank you. In this next video of the lesson, Customer Service, we will understand the importance of communication skills in customer service. Soft skills is one of the most important skills that an agent needs to possess for effective performance at work. Here we will be covering how to maintain good customer relationships with effective communication. Customers are human beings with whom the company needs to build a strong relationship. It is both the service and the relationship experience that ultimately shapes how the customer would look at the company. 
For making a healthy relationship, trust plays an important role, but there are other elements as well. Every relationship begins with attraction. One needs to be simply liked and must be able to build a rapport with the customer. The second element of a relationship is one's presence, which means being there when needed. Third element is communication, which is the message one sends across to another. It is a function of how one thinks and sees. All communications require a sender who transmits a message and a recipient of that message. The process is complete once the receiver has understood the message of the sender. Communication may take place in several forms such as oral, written, non-verbal or using body language. Whatever the content or form of message or the media is, the essence of communication is given by what the recipient has understood as being communicated. Now let us look at the communication process. The communication process starts with source. As a source, the agent must be clear about why she is communicating, what she wants to communicate and must be confident that the information is useful and accurate. Second is message, which is nothing but the information that one wants to communicate. Third is encoding, which is the process of transferring the information into a form that can be sent and correctly decoded at the other end. Fourth is the channel. A message is conveyed through a channel, which can be verbal, that is a telephone call, or written, that is letters, emails, etc. Fifth is decoding. It is the step where the information gets received, interpreted and understood in a certain way at its destination. Sixth is the receiver. It is an individual or individuals to whom the message is sent. Seventh is the feedback. When a message is being sent and received, the receiver is likely to send feedback in the form of verbal and non-verbal messages to the sender. In the process of communication, there are some barriers that can arise at each step. Communication can get distorted because of the impression created about the sender or because the message has been poorly designed or because too much or too little has been conveyed or because the sender has not understood the receiver's culture. Thank you. In this next video of the lesson, Customer Service, we will look at some of the concepts that the agent needs to understand about nonverbal communication. Here we will be covering the skills required for nonverbal communication. In nonverbal communication, attraction is the first pillar of any relationship and it lasts for long. Some useful tips for making a good first impression are First, you always have to be on time. Second, you have to present yourself appropriately. Third, you should have a confident smile on your face. Fourth, you have to be open and positive. Fifth, you have to show interest in your prospect. Your body language shows how confident you are. It gives an impression that the person is worth listening. An agent can look confident through his posture and through purposeful and deliberate gestures. Another important factor is trust. In a conversation, the agent has to be aware of some of the typical signs that may indicate when one is not honest and believable and be on guard against them. They are as follows. Little or no eye contact. Hand or fingers are in front of one's mouth when speaking. Increasing breathing rate. Face turning red, excessive sweating, etc. Next, we will discuss another important skill in nonverbal communication, which is listening. An agent should have excellent listening skills. There are two types of listening skills active listening and empathetic listening. Active listening means that we consciously try to hear not only the words but try to understand the complete message. The elements of active listening are paying attention, demonstrating that you are listening, providing feedback, not being judgmental, 
and responding appropriately. Empathetic listening implies hearing and listening patiently and with full attention to what the other person has to say even when you do not agree with it. Thank you. In this last video of the lesson, Customer Service, we will study about the role of ethics in insurance business. Here we will be discussing the characteristics of an ethical behavior. There is an increasing discussion about accountability and corporate governance, all of which together can be called ethics in insurance business. Ethical behavior automatically leads to good governance. Unethical behavior shows little concern for others and high concern for self. The code of ethics spelled out by the IRDA in the various regulations is directed towards ethical behavior. Compliance would be automatic if the insurer and its representatives always kept the interests of the prospect in mind. There are some characteristics of ethical behavior. First, placing best interests of the client above one's own direct or indirect benefits. Second, holding in strictest confidence and considering as privileged anything pertaining to client affairs. And third, making full and adequate disclosure of all facts to enable clients make informed decisions. But sometimes, the ethics are compromised in the following situations. First, having to choose between two plans, one giving much less premium or commission than the other. Second, temptation to recommend discontinuance of an existing policy and taking out a new one. And third, becoming aware of circumstances that could adversely affect the interests of the client or the beneficiaries of the claim. Here is a quick look at the topics covered in this lesson. Thank you.